What's up guys, Oscar Gomez here from Master Automotive Training, smartautotraining.com. If you guys haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button right now. This way you make sure that anytime I drop a new video, you get alerted so this way you're up to date with all the most recent and up to date information and this way we make sure that we keep you guys protected. So today's topic guys we're going to be talking about is aftermarket catalytic converters. What's so important about aftermarket catalytic converters you say? Well, there's a lot of good information that we need to know as smog technicians and auto repair technicians in general here in the state of California. Not only smog technicians here in the state of California need to know about aftermarket converters. Whenever a catalytic converter has been replaced from an OE or an original component to an aftermarket one, we need to make sure that that aftermarket converter actually meets the state requirements in order for it to be installed on the car. What I'm gonna show you guys today is one, how the numbering system looks on catalytic converters. Two, we're gonna look at the ARB website, so this way you guys are able to look them up and verify if that catalytic converter fits the particular car in question. And number three, I'm gonna show you guys a back door in order to determine if that catalytic converter fits the vehicle using the engine family if the engine family is not available because the under the hood label might be missing on the car. So go ahead and stay, stay with me guys. I'm gonna show you guys step by step how to look up this information. Go ahead and grab your tools guys. Let's get ready, let's hit it. Anytime we talk about aftermarket catalytic converters, you always wanna remember that any converter installed here in the state of California that's not original has to meet California Air Resources Board's requirements. If that catalytic converter meets the requirements, then it would be approved uh, for use, sell, and installation here in the state of California. Our job as smog technicians to verify if that aftermarket catalytic converter is legal and it was approved by California Air Resources Board or CARB and that's what I'm going to show you guys in this next step. All right, so if you guys are taking a look at a catalytic converter that's been replaced and this catalytic converter was replaced before January 1st of 2009, the numbering system is going to look very similar to what you guys can see in this picture right here. So if you guys are taking a look at the label, you guys can see that it says N-C-A-T-A. -A, and then uh, here at the bottom, we have a part number that is listed as 200300. And then the manufacturer date of 0905, and it's an OBD2 compliant catalytic converter. After January 1st of 2001, this numbering system has been uh, taken away. It's no longer there. So one thing you need to pay attention to if a catalytic converter comes in with this numbering system into your shop is you need to make sure that this catalytic converter uh, or the owner of the vehicle has some sort of evidentiary support such as a invoice with an install date prior to January 1st of 2009. Always make sure when you're looking at the catalytic converter if they don't have that invoice unfortunately you can't justify the installation of this converter and you can't prove that this converter was installed prior to January 1st of 2009. If you can't justify and you can't prove it then at this point you would have to fail the vehicle because it doesn't have the proper EO number and it's not approved by the ARB so you would have to fail the customer and they would have to get an updated catalytic converter with, with the proper numbering. So when looking at catalytic converters pre-2009, the TA would be the manufacturer's information or the abbreviation for the particular manufacturer. Notice that it's CA, so it is California approved through the Air Resources Board prior to January 1st of 2009. We have an N at the beginning and that N indicates that this is a new catalytic converter. That would be our part number and our serial number indicating uh, or given to the converter by the converter's manufacturer. Then you have the first two digits are the month and the last two digits are the year of which that catalytic converter was manufactured. So when it comes to catalytic converters that were manufactured, installed after January 1st of 2009, they're gonna have a numbering system that looks just like this. So it's gonna be a D dash three digits dash two Right below that, you're gonna have the uh, part number issued by the catalytic converter manufacturer. And then the last four digits are going to be the uh, month and year of manufacture for that particular converter. So the way you're gonna decode it is D dash. That's gonna be the D is the indication or the, the numbering for the EO number. The first three digits will be a three digit number corresponding to that particular manufacturer. And the last two digits are gonna be a specific approval number for that particular manufacturer through the ARB. Right below that, you're gonna have a, a, a part number that's going to be assigned by the catalytic converter manufacturer. And then like I said earlier, right below that, you're gonna have the date of manufacture. First two digits are for the month and the last two digits are for the year. So here we can see two samples of two aftermarket converters. The first converter right here at the top has a EO number of D-280-73. 
Then we have a part number and then it has a manufacturer date of 0909. The next one you guys see right below that has a EO number of D-280-77. And then right below that has a part number of 112077 with a manufacturer date of 0909. Here we can see another example. This one has etched uh, EO number on it. It has a EO number of D-193-86, part number 360104. And this has a manufacturer date of March of 2009. Now that we looked at the numbering system for pre-2009 and after-2009 on the catalytic converters, let me show you guys how to look up these catalytic converters to verify if that component fits that particular car. So the first thing you guys want to do, and you guys should already have this website bookmarked if you're a smog technician, is go to arb.ca.gov. I'm going to go ahead and open two tabs because we're going to be using two of them, so let me go ahead and open that up. Um, so make sure you guys open up two tabs. You're going to need two tabs for this process. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to resources. Once you're on the resources tab, then you're going to click here on executive orders. Once you're on the executive order one, you're going to click on D. If it is aftermarket catalytic converters that you are looking up, which is what we're looking up today, you're going to click on this D right here for aftermarket catalytic converters. Once you get there, you're going to click on catalytic converters, and then it's going to take you to this beautiful page right here. So we're going to click on this blue link here for aftermarket catalytic converter database. Yes, I know it's a lot of clicks, but uh, it's not too painless. Once you guys get here, bookmark this page so this way you guys can get to it right away and a lot faster. So once you get to this part, you have two ways of looking up catalytic converters. You could do a vehicle specific search using make, model year, model, engine size, and then hit search. Or if you have an EO number, you can always look up the EO number and then go from there. So the car we're going to be using today, um, a student of mine is the one who actually got this whole process going. He gave me a call, had a situation with the car. Um, so then I got involved and made a few calls to bar ARB and all that fun stuff. And this is how we ended up here. So we're going to use his car. So this way it's a lot easier. Uh, his is a Honda. So we're going to go to a Honda and it was a 2001. So we'll go to the 2001 and it's a Honda Civic. The engine size on this particular car is a 1.7. And then we're going to hit search. All right, so once we're on this page here, so these are, there's five pages of catalytic converters that fit this particular car. So if you guys notice, um, we, here we have the test group number, and then we have the application type. It could be for all, um, it could be installed anywhere in the exhaust system. Here's the manufacturer of that particular exhaust. Here's the manufacturer part number. And this is an LEV or ULEV, uh, low emission vehicle or ultra low emission vehicle. Here's the executive order number and the class for the installation would be PC or passenger car. Total converters would be number one. Uh, converter location would be underbody and it is a direct fit. So this is a direct replacement if this is the one that was installed on our particular car. So if you're doing a smart check inspection and the vehicle that you're inspecting has an aftermarket catalytic converter and the under the hood label or the ECS label is present while you're doing the inspection, you're going to look for the test group or the uh, engine family number, which will look something like this. So that engine family number needs to be uh, matching once you guys look it up here in the system. So for this Honda, the reason why we had to do so much research was because we didn't have an under the hood label. So because we didn't have an under the hood label, it was very difficult to determine which exact catalytic converter was the one that was for that particular car. So there's a number of ways you can actually go about doing so. So some instructors and some um, bureau representatives will tell you and instruct you to match the part number, the EO number, and the vehicle information. And if that matches, you are golden. So that's 100% true. So you can always click on the EO number. So we'll go ahead and click on that. It's going to open up the PDF for the executive order number. It's going to give you the vehicle information on uh, CO reduction and NOx reduction. And then it's going to display the whole exemption. And then right below that, notice how we have the year, make, model, engine size, uh, test group name, and then certification level of all the vehicles that can use that particular converter. Instead of spending hours trying to find that, then we're going to go the easy route. So that would be matching up the manufacturer part number and the EO number and the vehicle information. If all of that matches, then it's a direct fit. There is another way that I was taught by uh, engineering yesterday of how to be able to find this information. And that's what I want to share with you guys. So if for some reason you're found that you need to find a... Um, 
you look up an aftermarket converter and you notice that it has multiple applications and you're not 100% sure if that's the one that should be on the car. And then to make matters worse, there is no under the hood label. Uh, you got to make a judgment call here on which converter and is this converter legal to be installed on this particular car. So the way we're going to do that is on another tab on the research bar, we're going to click on that and we're going to click on on road. So we'll type in on road, two words on and then road and we'll hit enter. Once we hit enter, we're going to get some search results. So the search result that you guys want to look for is you want to scroll down until you find the on-road new vehicle and engine certification program. So you'll click on that. Once you guys are on this page, make sure you guys bookmark this. Uh, you're going to be using this quite a bit, especially if you get cars that are coming in with aftermarket converters and no Vecchi or ECS label. Uh, so you guys are going to have to be doing some homework on this. And this is why I recommend you guys bookmark this page. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down until you get to this gray area here. So we know that the vehicle that we're looking up today is a 2001. And notice how they range in order from May, um, June 4th, June 5th, June 4th, and June 4th. So we're going to go ahead and click on this one here on the last one. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to Honda. We know this Honda is a 1.7. Uh, based off of the way that engineering mentioned this to me yesterday, since we they cannot use decimal points because of coding issues, they're going to put a D. So if you see 1D9, that's 1.9. So that's going to be the leader size. So it's in alphabetical order, so we're looking for a 1.7. So we'll keep scrolling. All right, so we got one right here. So we'll click on that, and that's going to open up a completely new tab. Okay, so with this tab open, we can see that this is an Air Resources Board Executive Order A-23-297. So this is for a 2001 passenger car, ultra low emission vehicle, gasoline. It's a 1.7, but if you guys notice, this one ends in YJ9. So if we go back to our normal page, we're ending in JVF. So those abbreviations need to match. This executive order number doesn't apply to the particular vehicle that we're looking at. The models covered in this executive order are Civic Coupe, DX, LX, and Civic Sedan, DX, and LX. So we're going to try the next one. So we'll exit out of this. One of the things you could do is you could right click on this and open in a new tab. This way you don't do what I just did and close the tab and then you got to go back and start all over again. Uh, you don't want to do that. So we'll go ahead and do it right this time. So this one here would be for a Honda Civic Coupe EX SI or Civic Sedan EX Acura 1.7 EL. And again, this is an XJ9, so this wouldn't be the proper one that we are looking for. So we'll exit that and we'll keep doing some homework. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click on, we'll click on this last one here. We'll right click, we'll click on new tab. And once we open up the tab, now our main thing is we want to look at this test group. So the test group here is 1H and X, meaning it's a Honda and it's a 2001. The one means the year. And then it's a 0, 1.7, just in case the engine size could be a lot bigger. And then it ends in JVF. So let's go over here and double check that. So we know it's a 1HN XV01.7 JVF. So that's the correct one. So now that we're on this page, we could see that this vehicle was equipped with a warm-up three-way cat, a three-way cat, two heated O2 sensor, sequential fuel injection, and OBD2. So now we can determine that for sure this particular vehicle, this is a test group. So now we can go back to this page, and now we can know for sure that this test group matches a particular car that we are looking at. So if the car that's inside the shop um, has any one of these three part numbers, we know for sure that it's a correct installation of the proper catalytic converter. All right, so how many guys saw that information? Kind of confusing. Don't sweat it. I did the same when I took a look at it, but it made a lot more sense once I did it a couple times. So what I'm trying to say here is if the under the hood label is not present, what you're looking for in the under the hood label is this test group. If the test group, if the under the hood label doesn't have, it's not there or doesn't have the actual test group, then we're kind of blindly trying to place a catalytic converter. Um, and what I mean by place is, is that converter installed properly and legally on that particular car? Since we're not 100% sure, this method that I'm showing you now is how you would be able to look it up to determine if that car, uh, or to determine the test group for that particular car and then verify it using the database to make sure that the EO number, the engine group number, and the manufacturer part number all match up. So this way you're 100% sure that that aftermarket catalytic converter is 100% legal to be installed on the car that you're actually testing. 
Another thing you can pay attention to for the matchup is look at the emission components. So if the emission components match 100% too to the car that you're actually inspecting or that's in the bay, then you match that to the test group that's located here on your database. And then you also match it to the part number. Then you also match it to the EO number. You know 100% that that is a legitimately installed catalytic converter. So that's it guys. I hope that this video can help you guys 100%. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. I'm 100% here to help you guys as much as I possibly can. Sometimes it does take me a little while to get back to you guys. Keep in mind, uh, I am the director here at the school. Plus, um, I also have classes that I'm teaching, classes that I'm building. And I also got a life. So sometimes if I take a while to get back to you guys, I'm sorry. I'll get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. Please leave your comments. I will get back to them. I promise. The one thing I will ask from you guys, if you guys like these videos, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. So this way I know that I'm giving you guys good content. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. That's okay. But do me a favor. If you're going to take the time to give me a thumbs down, put in the comments what you didn't like. So this way I can see what I can do to help you guys. My goal is to help, help the industry one technician at a time. The only way I can do that is if you guys give me enough feedback so I can make some good changes. If you guys have any questions or any comments, please leave them, leave them down below. I'll try to help you guys as much as I can. Again, guys, this is Oscar Gomez from Master Automotive Training, smartautotraining.com. Hope you guys have a great one. If you guys have anything, if there's anything I can help you guys with, make sure you guys let me know. We'll see you guys on the next one.